Oh, Hello oh. and welcome to Team Fortress TV2. You're joining Commander X and Warhead Yeah and David Bewin for the coverage of the final week of ETF 12 season 23. Uh, it's all to play for right now going into this final week. All eight teams still have a chance of making playoffs. And we're here for the first game of the four fixtures this week. DD and five abs against four skins. You excited, War? End of end of this close season? Oh, I am excited as I always am. There we go. For nice. this close well, not really close. The the closest part of the season is for playoffs. <clears throat> Everything else is just, you know, already known. It's just maybe filler. We should just give uh, Perilous and Reason first and second, and then you know, like the real tournament could be for third between the rest of the teams. It should be like a bigger prize pool for third than first yeah. and second because it's more you know, exciting. It's like, yeah, you guys decide to be better than everybody else and ruin the fun. <laughs> so your punishment for being better than everyone is to just get no money, like a reverse reward system. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I am uh, looking forward to the video games, which is a bit weird because these kind of games I would normally think, oh, I can't believe I have to cast this. If this, this was, if this was week game. one, yeah. I would have been significantly less excited. Yeah, I would have. Uh, I... <laughs> I would have thrown like a tantrum and be like, "Excuse me, don't you know who I am? You're putting me, war her, yeah, not even on the first build video game. This is terrible." I know, but like these two teams, like the winners of high last season against a team that barely that that lost in the high playoffs last season, and right now both of them going in, still with a chance of reaching you know the mm. top floor, going into playoff weekend. Isn't four skins quite unlikely though? Yeah, uh, because like they depend on winning this and another team ballsing it. Don't they? Yeah, but okay. So let me talk. You, let me bring up the table. Break, break, while I talk. break it down whilst I try and complete my direct hit contract. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the two teams tonight, um, DD and Five Friend or DD and Five Abs, right? For them to hold on, my game volume so loud. Two seconds. There we go. That's much better for my ears. So yeah, DD and Five Friends coming into this uh, season as the butt of everybody's joke. Uh, in pretty much any fixture they could have had, um, are actually in a really good position. If they earn four points tonight, DD and Five Abs, they are in playoffs, like guaranteed. Four points, uh, no question. Um, for Four Skins, Four Skins need to take all six points. Lego need to lose all six points to public clear, and in and Infuse and Planet Express basically need to share the points. Um, so <laughs> like, those are some bad odds. You know that's yeah, pretty so bad. It's possible, but um, I think that um, that default uh, they gave away last week because they just did not have any any Jews left. Um, really, sort of cut them out of this race. You know, like even though they were playing perilous. Um, they might have been able to get. Yeah, point. they might have okay, taken a couple of points. You know, Viaduct's a bit of a wild card, etc. So, um, yeah. So, but it's still possible. There's still a chance, you know. And I think these maps, particularly Badlands, are going to be is going to be really strong for Four Skins. And who knows what they're going to be like on Viaduct? Who knows? Well, why do um, who is it? Uh, Infused and is it? Planet Express, why do they, oh yeah, they have to, yeah, because they're both in the running as well. Never yeah, mind. they're in the running, but they're playing each other. And honestly, yeah. that game could go either way, and I'm pretty sure Infused what? and Planet Express. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty Planet sure that, terrible. that game's going to have split points, which basically means both teams are going to screw each other over, and neither of them will get playoffs. It's going to be, you know, I like it when it's like this, you know, it's quite tense. Yeah. It doesn't so, happen enough. No, like like all eight teams with a chance going into the last the last four games. It's crazy. Well, the good news is I have just completed my contract. Um, let me see what I get. Whilst, okay. Uh, David okay. brings up some stats on display. Yeah. Um, well, we let me let me know. That's ignore what, them. That's what everyone's tuned in for. Oh, really. I got a coffin nail sticky bomb launcher. A what? A coffin nail sticky bomb launcher. What's that? It's 
a sticky bomb launcher that's got coffin nails on it. All right. I don't, However, know what is. I don't know what one it is. Hold on, let me. I need to put Matt Pitmick on because at the moment it just looks like a brown smear. Oh, uh, you got the, no, the it's highly got like, valuable brown smear sticky look. It's got like uh, shiny stuff on it. The TF2 logo. <laughs> David, stop telling me what to do. We're going over my skin. <sighs> okay, back to the season, I guess. I mean, I was pretty excited, but it's been a little bit dwarfed now by War's contract. But I'm still pretty hyped. So, um... Here, as you can see on screen, we've had it for a while, is the DD and Five Friends roster. Honey Badger on Medic, who's been really rather good, despite, you know, what everyone likes to say about him. Chappie, who's a uh, really good at Demo Man. Not always the best decision maker, but really good. Uh, Q&A. I, I, I disagree. I think he's been pretty poor. Controversial. Q well, all, the, all the games that I've seen him be in, he's been pretty poor. Uh, I think that's too harsh. I don't think he's like, you know, no, a revelation, just... but he's, you know. He's, he's been nothing amazing in any way. All right. Okay. Someone who has been and un as uncontestably a professional amazing, demo you know nothing. Man, one that Stop has that. won several seasons of ETF 12. <laughs> what, two? One and a half? I don't Maybe know. three. Uh, we'll, we'll get someone to check that. But yeah, the person who's really been the standout, the guy who came in halfway through the season, um, QNX on Pocket Soldier. He's been really good at Soldier for a really long time. And I think this is one of the first times he's played in Prem. I don't think it is the first, but one of the first times. And he's really showing how he should have been here, like, you know, like two or three, four, five seasons ago. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's a good uh, fragger, I guess. Um, but. I don't know. I, I guess he's the kind of guy that like a low prem team need to drag them through the season. Uh, so yeah, I guess he fills that role perfectly. I guess the <clears throat> like the weakest part of the team is probably their scouts for me. I kind of feel like their scouts have the lowest ability out of everybody in prem. I mean. I don't know if the KD and KAG, the, the number in brackets, if that's their rank. It is, yeah. One rank out of 22-ish. That rank is poor out of 22. Yeah, I find it hard. Like, shyberg has been sort of... They've not been bad, but they've not really been standout, you know? Like, no, they, has these moments. Uh, I'll be but... honest, right? They have been bad, but yeah. they have got quite um, a few things going against them when you're sort of like... You know, the, the problem is is that there are quite a few really good scouts in Prem. Like you've got some really really nasty combos to play against. So if you're if you have like weaker scouts and they're not sort of as good, they do look pretty bad. And there's nothing wrong with that. But obviously, they must be doing something right if they're able to win some games. You know. Yeah, I think that's what it kind of comes down to. Like, I don't know what it is about them. I can't quite put my finger on it yet, but. They, they, just, they, keep, do, they just keep pulling out results. They're they just... do what you need to do, their scouts, and they, they don't do anything more than that, you know? And I guess that's kind of like uh, one of the problems that quite a few new teams get. Um, they don't really have coordination with the team, and when you have a scout duo that are just sort of like quite heavy wannabe fraggers, and they never really sort of achieve anything together, like getting on the point covering position like you get quite a few scouts that don't really value their lives and just bait their team out because they just go in and die all the time but I, d I mean yeah these guys I guess you know if they were doing that bad they wouldn't win anything so they just haven't been anything special I guess it's yeah. their first season and prem for both so yeah it's kind of like like watching them play they, like as a team they make quite a lot of mistakes but then, when it counts, do you know what I mean? Like, against LEGO last week, they won the important fights. Like, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, they don't lose a lot of rounds, you know, generally. So they always keep the score, you know, in a reach and distance. And then, when it sort of comes to these clutch times, where we see a lot of other teams, like Infused, Planet Express, LEGO, just choke really hard, uh, DD and Five Friends just, just play their normal game and get, get the results and get the caps. Yeah, I think uh, the, those are the kind of things that are really annoying when you play against like really bad or have a really bad scout in your team. 
Like, uh, Scout is the easiest class to play ever, undisputed. So you don't really have to do anything apart from shoot people. And then when you have like those uh, that sort of like can't aim or just don't have like any sort of game sense, like all you have to do is just stay alive and that's it. I mean, one thing is like Stark is a really, really good scout to watch if you're trying to improve because he can frag like loads. But even if he's sort of like outmatched or anything, he just keeps himself alive and does really well on sort of annoying teams. Like every time I play against him in a team, it's just constant thing in mumble is Stark's behind and you just think oh for fuck's sake not again because you're just going to be chasing him for like the next 15 minutes and it's just going to annoy you I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change for stats now you're talking about scouts too much sorry <laughs> you get, you're getting hung up on this man um, I get so, yeah. passionate <laughs> if we look at the four skins roster um they had a really strong sort of opening couple of weeks and then they sort of drifted off. They had like Wacky was away and so on. Um, but going through the roster, we got Zangetsu on Medic, Spari on Demo Man, who's been standout, uh, Wacky and Jackie as the Soldier Duo, and Sorex and Shul Kipple on Scout. What are you feeling? Who stands out for you on this roster? Other than mm. Spari, obviously. I don't really think Spari stands out. Um, I think but, uh, is that what I'm looking at? I think um, maybe the scouts are pretty yeah, good. You have to excuse me because we're having week. boiler problems. Well, <laughs> let's listen to this. I want to. I want to hear about these boiler problems. I don't know if that's the right gauge I'm looking at, but are you sure? <laughs> it goes <laughs> round to four, the bottom one, and then the top one goes to 120. Well, that's yeah. that's enough now. Yeah, that's yeah. Let's let's look at some different numbers. Those numbers were pretty interesting. But looking at this, uh, Jackie Legs numbers are pretty good. By which I mean, nice number of air shots. That's um, the only thing that matters. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it all comes down to. You know, like people will win tournaments, people will win leagues, people will win lands. But what people really remember are sick shots. Well, I'm and sorry, prime videos. I was saying in a pickup earlier afraid. today about. Um, um. What was it? At I forty nine when I was playing of Element of Violence and we lost every single game in like the playoffs. Uh for like the knockout stages. I remember that, yeah. And uh yeah, <laughs> it's like we lost every single game. game apart from we beat uh the Enigma Zone crew and that was it. So we lost against Saints as well. And then was, um was this for I got way? an air shot. <laughs> Was this the land where every game you played in the playoffs was 5-0 one way or the other? You know, Not really, it was just me top DPMing cards, all the time and I got a massive air shot. It doesn't matter, like, nobody remembers that poor result, kind of everybody just, just remembers the air shot. Nobody even remembers the team name, it's just, no. it's just, for result. It's just that air shot and that's all not everyone will matter. They, they don't call the, the team what they were, they just yeah. call, like, refer to that stage as War's team or just War. <laughs> that's it, that land where War hit all the pipes on 18. But yeah, no, I'm excited. I think Badlands will be really good for Four Skings. Um, and that they can really excel on. I think their teamwork will really sort of stand out. And it's certainly something they can take three points off. And I honestly think, like, you know, Four Skings need to take six points to have a chance. But I really think this combination of maps is what they can do. Is like, our two maps they can take all points on. Mm. But I guess every team is kind of good at Badlands at this yeah, stage I now. I don't know if we... Yeah, but I think they're extra good at Badlands. Mm, I mean, I think the uh, between the two teams, they'll probably have like the better DMs, but DD 5F must be doing something good to beat LEGO. Presumably. I don't I know, mean, LEGO, LEGO did choke pretty hard, but I guess you can only beat what's in front of you, right? Well, I don't know what, if, um, if it was more yeah. LEGO winning or... No, sorry, LEGO sucking or DD5 winning kind of thing. It was a combination of both, really. Like, TV5F uh, in particular had a couple of really big plays. That Ixy had a couple of big moments as well, and that kind of, I kind of worked for them. But I know, like Condom had a few sort of horrible moments, but they they played well. Do you know what I mean? It's not like they were gifted it. They still had to earn it a bit. I know, but yeah, let's look at some head to heads. I have some heads to heads. I have Spari versus Chappy. Or Jackie versus DD Five F. What are you feeling? 
can't, I can't see it anyway, so I have to wait for whatever shows up on stream. Um, I've not pressed it yet, I'm waiting for someone to pick. Opening it now, let's go Spari and Chappie. You, so you don't really rate either of these demo men then? Uh, Spari's alright, I guess. That's it. Yeah. No, is that the extent of your in-depth demo man analysis? Yeah, I'm trying to keep the, the talk down so then people don't hear about my boiler problems. <laughs> are you embarrassed about your boiler problems? Uh, no, boiler problems are boiler <laughs> problems. Uh, although I haven't said that. I yeah. just don't want it to uh, be a downer on the cast. <laughs> it is a very exciting day. Let's put it this way, right? Hearing someone yeah. talking about boiler problems plus my voice is already an incredibly boring thing. Oh, right. Like, can you imagine if I was the one that was talking about boiler <laughs> Wait, problems right. right now? I used to work, I worked over Christmas, or like just after Christmas, um, for three weeks, um, booking appointments for broken down boilers and stuff. Oh, can you help me with my boiler problem? Uh, I can book you an appointment, but it sounds like you've already got one. I don't know, actually. I can't hear it. So you probably, <laughs> you guys are probably more aware as to what's happening than me. Don't worry. Hopefully, someone in chat is a plumber, so anyway, they'll be able to <laughs> demo sort stats. Out. Yeah. Um, what I'm seeing really is everything's kind of even. Like, uh, Chappie's got slightly better stats, but I think most of those better stats are coming down to he he plays a lot more of a passive role than Spari, so he's dying less but still putting out damage. Which means um, his stats are always going to look better. Whereas even though I think Spari is the much better demo man, and really sort of make like I find like I feel like if Spari has a good push or a bad push, it really dictates how the entire push goes for Force Kings. Like they really sort of lean on Spari a lot, especially with their Uber pushes. Yeah, I think what is an upset in sight is uh, Shappy is second on DPM with two hundred and eighty-two. That is a low number. This is a solid state of affairs for TFT. That man's been nerfed. Two eight twos, all right, man. Nah, that's just that's just disgusting. You know, like, not saying that he's bad. I'm saying that's like how bad Dimmerman is in general. Do you want to talk about something else? I don't, you're getting really depressed over Dimmerman. No, can we skip to the other <laughs> stats, please? Okay, I've got no scouts, unfortunately, but I've got Jackie versus DD five F. Oh yeah, that'll do. Yeah, obviously both players. Um, Jackie, main caller for his team, you know, leading by example. Uh, he's been really good for a long time, but has finally sort of, what's the word, transformed his sort of band of Jews into like a premiership outfit now and that can compete properly. And it's now getting to show his stuff off in Prem. Whereas DD5F, another player who's come straight from high. Um, mate, he played pocket in high though, and it's now making a switch up to Roma. And I'm starting to feel like DD5F is sort of finding his feet on the Roman class. Mm, I mean, I can't. I haven't seen like loads of games from him in far, in high anyway, so I can't really say. But yeah, I mean, I think some of the games that he has been playing, uh, especially against Lego, he had a pretty good game. Um, Jackie, I hold hold very high regard for myself just because he has uh, one of those really confusing voices where you're not sure where he's from. Um, like he tells you he's from Israel, but you, you, you think, don't believe it for a couple of months. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, why do you have such a distinct American accent? Uh, and it's like when you find out his age, the fact that he's only nine and he's got a voice that deep, and it's just like, oh dear. <laughs> like it's a really bad cover story. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> he's actually a CIA agent. <laughs> Undercover in Israel. Kind of like undercover as a nine-year-old um, TF2 player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Anyway, I've I've played with Jackie. He's he's an alright lad. He's he's good at video games. I think the only sort of problem with this team is maybe practice. He sort of vented frustration at how little they practice. But I think that's because of um, military service. That what seems like all these players have to attend to these days. Um, as uh, Israel desperately try and take back the Gaza Strip and uh, don't let Palestine out kind of thing. But politics. Hold on. There's a, there's a new button I'm being told about. I'm not pressing the button. It's called Show Bio and it lists career achievements and trivia. It's pretty nice, right? Well, I don't think any of these players had career achievements. Uh, Jackie Legs won high last season. Wow, what an achievement. achievement. Yeah. Print nice. that off. 
that's what I've uh, done. I go onto my ATF World profile, print off my awards, stick it on my wall. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. sure everyone's very proud of you. Well, uh, I can see the achievements now. That is a very, very barren <laughs> trivia. Is no problem. An excellent voice. Oh, that's that's actually pretty good. Right. Does it work the, on the team page? Can I bring up everyone's trivia? There's only in the head to heads. I can bring it up. Should, I, the, should we look at Chappie's? career achievement? Premiership debut in season twenty-three. Hold on. Let's look at the demo man achievements. Let me press. All right. Show me by. Is a new thing we've got. Um, so, yeah. We're sort of trialling it out. Uh, the formatting on that one doesn't quite work. Uh, I can read the trivia out for you. Chappie uh, used to be a professional basketball player before moving to the UK. Did you know that? A professional basketball player? Yeah. Yeah, I always thought, yeah, you know what, I'm going to stop my <laughs> professional career as a basketball player and I'm going to move to the UK and play TF2 instead. You've got to go where the money is, War. You've got to go where yeah. the money is. <laughs> you know, you just get to that point in life. you just got to go where the money is. Um, uh, you can't really read one about Spari, but Spari is one of the few Jews who has actually gone to the army, come back, and continued to play TF2. Hmm. That's, these are some good achievements from both... <laughs> Premiership. It's, it turns out that season nine is pretty good for a Premiership debut, right? That, that was Better an age ago. I think ninety percent of the people in chat weren't even born then. <laughs> I was. I was around at that time. Yeah, so was I. I think that. I think that was that before Premiership was even called Premiership back when I, it was. Yeah, Div I think 1. that was also the season after the AFS season. I think. Uh, I can't remember. Let's not talk about that. That's sort of like you know. Yeah, that's just one of the many attempts that someone's tried to kill TF2 with. Just wait for Permzilla's attempt. <laughs> it's still coming. Yeah. But, uh, oh, look at all this previous previous results. That is quite upsetting for Force Games. Wait, Force Games haven't won a game yet. I didn't realise. No. Like, they've got points, but they've not actually not actually won a game. Yeah, the, the, um, that's quite, you know, DD5 have got a good peppering of green there. Four skins is just quite red and blue. That's upsetting for him. It's a nice pattern they've got going on though. Oh what? Well, yeah, it's consistent. Oh, yeah, but um, that's a bit. I, the thing is, I thought that these guys would do a lot better, but I guess you know, forfeits, lack of players to really practice with, whatever excuse they want to bust out. Yeah, it's not really working for them. You know what, War? I think we're going live soon. We're going I hope to so. I'm really. <laughs> it's it's kind of difficult to talk about these teams because I don't want to say something offensive about Forskins, you know, for Jewish reasons. Fun <laughs> fact, though, I made their avatar. I had to Did go you? through a lot of. Uh, yeah, I, I made it myself. I had to go through a lot of pictures of penises with Forskins, and my goodness, was it <sighs> a wild night! <laughs> Let's put it as if you type, yeah, just in general, it was just disgusting. <laughs> That's right. Don't don't tell them whatever you're going to tell them to type into search. Yeah, don't, not... don't tell them to type it into search. So yeah, we're going live soon. So give me a prediction for my luck. Who's Ooh. what are we going to do scoreline wise? Mm, it's really difficult, but I'm going to say D five F. There, they'll probably win. You know, D five reference. And we're live. Here we go. Four skins on blue. DD and five abs on red as we go to this first middle on um, product right now. King of the hill, we see four skins getting on the point nice and early. Spari taking that forward ground, wacky up above him. Both teams playing pretty passively. Ixi is on sniper, so DD and five abs is going to be looking for that. And he body shots uh, Zangetsu, the medic, straight away. Wacky goes aggressive to try and counter him. QNX run of a shotgun bow cleans him up. Here comes Jackie for a big bomb. All the way around, trying to get onto Honey, but he gets shut down by Chappie. Uh, meanwhile, Four Skins have actually managed to cap the point, uh, capitalising off how defensive uh, for um, TD and Five Abs were. But they take control of it now, and they kept their medical life throughout all of this. To be that doesn't really matter so much if they did cap it, because they just prolonged their own spawns and quickened up the spawns for DD5. So, yeah, it's not so, not such a bad thing. But I like. Um, I think they're trying to go full for a force play. Honey is on 60-60. Oh, what a save! Oh, my God. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, wow. I've got an erection for the first time in years. That's amazing. <laughs> War's boiler problems are over. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That, that was, you know that, what? Colour what? me impressed and purple because that was pretty sick. Like, people say a lot of a lot of things about Honey Badger, but um, he's he's really good at medic. Like that was that was absolutely like that's the only surf he could have made from that situation yeah. to not get forced, because otherwise if he would just surf onto a point, he was just gonna run into a scout. As we see Jackie Legs coming in again, one rocket, two rocket, honey holds on again, he goes running behind, uh, Jackie gets picked up, Spari's going deep, trying to get onto them, but Honey's round the corner, picks up a health pack, he gets shut down. Uh, they're trying to cap the point minus goes on, but sort of scattered attempt. They do pick up Q and X, but Ixie manages to kill Zangetsu in the midst of all of this as well. And there's just so little health on these four skins players as Ixie just picks them off one by one. Oh my goodness. Are we on fright because this is turning into a train wreck <laughs> reference? Uh, but yeah, that was just... I mean, they still haven't forced Honey. Yeah, he's, he's had it for the, since the beginning of the round. He's not even had to use it yet, and Zangetsu's not even got to Uber. But what happened with Zangetsu? Were they not, like, building its spawn, or, or he, what? He came halfway, and then Ixie dropped him. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's... Um, now we see another force attempt. Sorix goes down, Jackie Legs high. Uh, Honey will pop for this one as he gets struggled into the air, but they're going to clean up all five players. No one building with Zangetsu, oh, so... That is, that is not good. That's a mistake, so yeah. it's just going to equalise for Evers, and now we see a forward hold coming out from DD and 5 abs, and they are in absolute control as they go down to a minute left on the clock in this first round. You know, this is... Um, this is incredibly good from DD5. They're actually reacting to everything very, very well. They're now trying to get out as four skins to try and push forward. They are able to collect and player. They're going on to Honey again, who's now on 30 HP. He dies! What a bad shit of player medic. He should just quit the game. Oh, is he even trying, Honey? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, that was pretty good from Foreskins, but it's too little too late. They, they've wasted so much time, and DD5F have really been sort of like playing this very, very well. I mean, they've got all the time in the world now. Yeah. Quite literally. Oh wow, oh, and he's dear. just going to body shot him again. Uh, Wacky is going to get denied completely. Jackie's trying to go aggressive now as well. They've sort of pinned him back into the corner here. Uh, scout on to Honey Badger, but he survives again. Sorex can't find the, the finishing blow. And now Chappie's jumped in, forcing Spari out. DD5F is on the hunt as well, but Ixie's going to pick that one up. And this has just been absolutely dominating right now. Zangetsu cannot stay out of these sight lines. Ixie is just constantly sending him back to that respawn queue. Um, and we see Forskin going to make a desperate attempt here. Seven seconds left until DD and Five Friends take the first round. They're all going to jump in. They trade one for one. They're starting to get the time on the point. But Honey Badger's really close to Uber. Spari gets headshot. Oh uh, they need... Uh, Honey's going to get the Uber now, and that is surely it. He's got it on Chappie. He's got it on Showberg, who are just slowly but surely cleaning everyone up. Just San gets it. Now he gets one slice and then gets SMG down. Another kill for Ixie on the Medic. And that's a confident 1-0 to DDM5 abs. They have literally hit the ground. Not running because that is an understatement. I can't think of a metaphor that would really sort of fit this to be honest, but that was just a really, really good round from DD5. Yeah, I we think. now see uh, Sorex actually rolling out on the counter sniper here. Uh, Shall Kipple was pressing and Honey Badger really heavily right now. Uh, Jackie Legs has gone deep as well, all over to Honey. Picks up two, picks up QNX as well. Uh, huge aggression right now as Jackie Legs is forcing back Ixie as well. Um, DD5F is trying to go forward, but he's on one HP. Surely Sorox will clean that one up. And Jackie Legs even gets the sniper before getting taken down by Showberg. Huge mid from Jackie Legs. As Chap goes in for a final bomb, lands on oh the my god! Head, traps him with stickies, and now Showberg's going to try and clean everything up. He's got a. Uh, he takes Sorox down as well. And Forskins were in a great position. Uh, and Wacky's actually come in as well. Wacky's come out from the flank, cleans up the medic. Shulkeeple's uh, going to combine with him onto Q and X, and it's just constant trading of frags right now uh, as the respawns come in after those early deaths on mid. Yeah, and the mid's still not capped either, so both teams can probably recontest this because the medic's going to be there in time. I'm not sure Forskins really want to carry on with this. They are missing two. Sorex does need to hit some fat shots if they want to get any chance on contesting and retaking this properly. Are they... He's got a shot on Honey! Oh. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, he whacks Q and X on the top right, so they've got but a they player. But everyone else. Oh but they've my lost God. two, Ixie takes him down as well. That is... No, that was, it was alright, but they just weren't achieving anything. They, they weren't, they were sort of in two minds, and I'm not quite sure why. The, the, the point was there for them to take it. You know, it's, there's um, players up on each side, they just have to play it slow, and then, you know, go on a pick, but... Mm. You know, Sorix gets one, but they lost two people in the process on the flanks. Including the not... medic. Like, yeah, Sangetsu just... down again. Um, and now we see a big aggressive jump from Jackie going all the way across, all the way around, using all these rockets to get behind. Uh, open it up for Wacky to bomb in, who's got the crush DD5F. Up top, spamming him down, and there's cap time on the point. Sangetsu's holding really defensive, though. not getting any heals on his team. Um, they're just trying to bait out the Uber, and they do oh get the God, Uber he's out. Die again. Um, he sh might be okay, Showbug's chasing through, he's running back to Sorex, Sorex needs to hit in a scout really, he's trying to body block now Sorex, uh, Showbug gets the health back, oh, that Sorex was actually well played. defends him. Yeah, uh, that was actually well played yeah. Puts himself on the line and gets his medic out of there, uh, and that's going to allow uh, Forskings uh, to get the point um, for free essentially, because of those bodies left, cd 5 have just backed it up, but Ixie gets that another frag, oh my God. But Wacky goes through with the Honey Badger, um, they can't keep Zangetsu up, but they're doing a much better job of keeping Honey out of the game as well. As we see both soldiers go aggressive, Zangetsu goes down again. Both soldiers are weak on the point. They're trying to jump away, the market card comes out. Uh, but he's going to get body shot, Sorex, before that can come into play. Soldier, Jackie Legs going in again. Spari's going to clean up one. He's got a soldier on his head as well, though. Spari's trying to fight everyone right now. He's got the pipes, he's hitting everything he can, but he's by himself. He's so low. Ixie cleaning him up. He, he's um, just absolutely shitting on them, and like, Forskins can't keep Sangesu alive at the moment. He might as well not even go medic, he should just go engineer or something, because, you know, his team was just sort of leaving him for dead, and you can just see him in these sort of fights, he's just running away, like, trying to chase one of his teammates down to, to like, get some support, and it's just really... I kind of feel bad, because this must be incredibly frustrating, just being left high and dry by your team. And it's like in comparison, like Honey's just got, you know, they're not like sitting next to him all the time, but there's always somebody that's just keeping an eye on him, making sure that he's not going to die. They've got a Nuba now, and Sangetsu's oh, wow. going to die again. And they're, they're just not reading it at all. Like, they, they just didn't seem ready for that Uber at all. Like, they're going aggressive again, and maybe their DM's going to come out on top. Like, they get the sniper pick. They're now trying to focus down Honey, but Honey's just sort of duped away from everyone. Uh, they do get a nice trade of frags though, and now Honey's sep QNX is separated from Honey. QNX is going to take the soldier fight on the point. Uh, going to trade one for one. Uh, Forcings could probably cap this off right now, but they're still worried about DD5F behind. Oh, Threatening their medic again. Uh, he's going to he's gonna kill Spari before he gets cleaned up. And Honey got body shot by Sorex. Yeah, he was peeking, launching arrows at him, and uh, Sorex hit him once and just no scoped him a second time. So I guess it was just sort of being a bit too cocky, but... You know, gifted him uh, the kill there. Yeah, and now we see Force Kings trying to play in this defense quite aggressively. Uh, they don't want to give Ixie any room, I imagine, as they're pressing them back onto this cliff. Ixie peeking out from lower, uh, but DD5 is actually going to go down first. Well, people just suiciding basically at Ixie right now and gets for trade. Uh, aggressive play, but it might not pay out on the long run. But again, the soldiers are cycling on this cliff area, but they might lose Wacky right now. Force Kings might be overextended. They don't quite have Uber yet to make it pay off. Spari's super low, Sorex is going to go down as well. They're desperately trying to keep Spari alive right now. They're going to just about have Uber, but they're going to lose the point for it. Um, and I don't know if they're going to want to contest straight away, and already DD5F and QNX are just sort of lurking behind. As Jackie I'd really like, he wants like to, to see them just go into them now. I mean, they've got them in like a really bad position. If they make the Uber there, it'd be really good. Oh uh, yeah, they're going to bust out with that Uber. Zangus is going to catch Jackie. Jackie's reloading everything, but it's given Honey time to get the Uber because they delayed that repush. Now Zangetsu's getting jumped hard, he's so low. Somehow going to get away, but he's putting no heals out right now. It's all going to come down to Force King's DM to hold on to this one. And they're crushing them right now. Um, it seemed kind of weird. I guess like Ixie and Honey just hung really far back, played it safe for the... Uh, just to preserve Uber advantage, but it cost them uh, the point and a lot of bodies right there. Yeah, that was um, really, really good from DD5 in total. Like they were doing, they've been playing this really, really well, and uh, I mean, I mean, I guess this is now the point where four skins will actually start taking part in this game. But it seems a little too little, too late. I kind yeah. of feel. Yeah, DD5 apps just need to cap it once. And we get that early frag onto Jackie Legs, followed up by another headshot from Ixie. Uh, Shulkeeper was now trapped behind. Dodges the air shot. 
but will surely eventually go down as he gets focused down. Chappie's been left a bit on the point. The Uber's going to come in, but Honey has it in response. Wacky is now caught out on this one. It's just for two of them. Surik should be able to clean up the Roma, but Ixie's going to headshot Zangetsu for however many times. I can't even count anymore. The aggression's coming back in from Force Kings. They desperately try and hold on. But Schoberg is just slowly but surely cleaning everyone up. And that's 2-0 right there. Better from Force Kings, but not good enough. It's, um... <clears throat> yeah, it's... I mean, I, I'd like to see how much Sangesu has died and how many Ubers he's got and, and stuff because it's going to be quite a sad sight. But this is—they really need to start start like making the mark on this. It's—I mean, the last, last round they did have like a little attempt at, a, at like what looks like a coordinated team, but they really have to start doing it again now. And now we see Sorex goes down straight away to that body shot. Shall people get picked on the flank now? DD Five F is flying, and Spari gets headshot. Sangesu's going to get picked off. Uh, it's just wacky now on Sniper. Never mind. Uh, he gets taken down as well, and DD5F don't lose anyone. Like, on, on a map as chaotic as Viaduct, to take a mid without losing anyone is really, really dominant. Yeah, this is um, very, very bound. <laughs> I mean, if, I don't know, I don't want to sort of like call it GG, but if I was for oh skins, God. I would just probably be focusing and trying to, you know, get your teammates to have the attitude for the next map. Yeah, I mean, we see um, QNX oh, actually flanked goodness. all the way behind. I guess he nearly died to pipes before, but he's, now he's QNX behind is again. behind. One rocket on oh, Zangetsu, wow. he's in the air. Wall shot to finish it off. QNX is probably going to get picked off for his efforts, but he's got the pick that mattered. Um, and now Honey, again, just on 100% sitting with the sniper. And Force Kings need to set something up. Scout's coming flying in. He gets picked off. He's, they're going in one by one right they're, now. They're just getting absolutely, <laughs> like, words. You know, sexual references and all that lot. I can't think of, like, anything that would describe no, this it keep it appropriately for a stream. Like, this is just, just terrible. I can't even get in. Wacky's going for a double jump. Sinks it up with Jackie. They're both going to get on top of Honey. Honey hasn't taken a spot of damage. He's going to clean oh up both soldiers. Gracious, Scout's come in. He's actually going to get the drop on Honey. Honey wow. feeling confident. They should just fold. Yeah. Feeling confident after dodging all those rockets. As we see Chappie come flying in. He's going to pipe one. He's going to pipe Ooh. two. Uh, he's going to pan Spari. Uh, Zangetsu did slick away. Slick away? Sleek away. Get away? He got away. That's it. Slink, slink, that's the word I wanted. Slink away. Is that uh, even a, like a word? Uh, Slip? Uh, slink. Like slink, like slinky. Slink. I've never, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, CF2 still going on oh, as Jackie Legs my gets goodness. kicked out of the air. Soldier all over Zangetsu and Force Kings are just going to get absolutely crushed. Um, they had a big uber advantage as well, but it didn't even come into play. Everyone's getting cleaned up now. It's just Jackie Legs remaining um, on the respawn. And 48 seconds left. And Force Kings haven't touched the point so far in this round. And it's not looking good for them right now as they try and bust out this right hand side. Jackie's going to get air shot. They're getting pinned into this corner. They're still trying to bust out right now. And they might have just got it. They might be able to catch them here. But Honey Badger does have Uber. They have to be careful not to extend Zangetsu too far. But there's only 30 seconds left on the clock. So they sort of have to go. Wacky's going in deep. Launches uh, DD5F up into the air. Will get taken out for his trouble, but he's made space. But Honey has his Uber in the bag, and he can just pop at will. Uh, but they're, they're playing it really defensively. I don't know if they're waiting for something. They're going to give away the point. Lose DD5F and then pop. They're going to lose Ixi as well. Uh, the first real misplay we've seen from DD and 5 abs right now. As they're just getting themselves surrounded. Honey Badger's gone all the way behind to try and Uber source and get to. This is ambitious. He's been spotted out. He gets juggled back by Scattergun. And DD and 5 abs look like they're almost taking the piss right now. Yeah, it's, um, they've... If, if they had reclining chairs, they would all have them thoroughly... Oh, Oh, dear. my God. Um, that just should not be allowed to happen in a forward told. I, I don't know. This is just disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like a matter of time right now. I mean, Forskins have got 40 seconds off the clock. It's re-pushes really again, and they've changed the map. Oh, well, this is tense. <laughs> I think it's I safe think... to say that was mm. the end of it. Yeah. And it was 3 would I'm watching the uh, Ixie headshot on the replay. Oh! He just walks out. Like, there's no one even close. It's 
it's even worse watching it the second time. <laughs> it's like the whole game was just I don't know. I, I'm not quite sure if foreskins have a flank, um, <laughs> but that was just there. Were, there were just so many terrible like mistakes. I, there are individually I can, as a team, as like, a team in yeah. total. It was just I mean when um, QNX got behind through their spawn to get onto Zangesu on Cliff by himself. It's just... I mean, the, the sort of the real cherry on the top of that situation as well is the fact that QNX not only gets behind Unseen, jumps, gets two rockets off on Zangetsu before anyone's even challenging him, you know? No one's even putting any pressure on QNX to, you know, to make these clutch shots. He's just, he's just got all the time in the world. Um, yeah. It's, just, think... yeah, it's terrible. Okay, so as as that stands it, since DD and Five Friends obviously took three rounds in a row and all three points, DD and Five Friends need one sultry point from this Badlands game to guarantee themselves uh, a playoff spot. Oof, I'm going to make a, an audacious prediction here, and I think they might do it. Do we have logs? Because I have logs. Yes, yeah, uh, they're in Mumble. Yeah, they're on stream. Um, oh dear. What stands out for me, Ixie mm. stands out. Soberg um, stands out. He's got 30 kills, 18 assists. 413 DPM. That That's is big. fat. That is some fat DPM. That is a number that is great. Chappy on 400 as well. Yeah. That is um in total their their get their players like just completely rocked them. Zangestu has 15 deaths in 16 minutes. Like that 15 is... doesn't sound like the biggest number, but in a 16 minute game, if you if, it, if we played for 30 minutes, that would put Zangestu on what like 28, 29 deaths. Yeah, it's just really, really, really poor. I mean, Wacky has six kills and twenty deaths. Oh yeah. my goodness gracious me! The, these sort of numbers just should not be seen. Like, yeah. It's just like, terrible. Like it's hard to get like you know good stats on Viaduct, but it's like that is that's extreme. You know, bottom damaging as well. It's not even like he's trading for damage and they're just dying for it. You know, mm. just not a lot. There's not a lot of stuff hit all around. Sorex it's just everybody on that yeah. team. But yeah, Sorex was like had good stats, but that was mainly because he went sniper and he was slightly more protected. Yeah. I feel like as well, because like if if they're playing, like Wacky and Jackie are playing really aggressive, that's fair enough, you know? Like two roaming soldiers on Viaduct, you know, trying to exploit it, put the heels on the scouts and the demo man. But uh, Shulkeeper was playing really aggressive as well. Sorex was on sniper for uh, a good portion of that, like the last part of the game. Um... And Zangetsu just wasn't really with sparring that much. Or if he was, because he was the only target he had, he just got caught out when DD and Five Friends went aggressive. There just didn't seem to be... Um, what's the word? There was no cohesion between the team's decisions, you know? Like, they didn't like, right, we got a sniper, so I'll play a bit tighter. Like, QNX basically played like a pocket when mm. they had the point while they had a sniper, you know? As that extra sort of protection for yeah. Honey. But there was no sort of correlation between anything any of the Four Skins players did. Yeah, there was just nothing there, like, at all. Like, there was nothing positive you could really take from that game for that team. Like, this is sort of like the, the part when your entire team is just emotionally down after being stomped that hard. On Viaduct as well, because Viaduct has to be, like, one of the most frustrating maps to be um, stomped on, because... You know, like on five CP maps, every time you lose a round, obviously the whole game resets, and you know it it's doesn't reset. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't reset as many times on Viaduct, and you can just be closed off into your spawn for just ages. And you know, I think if you get stumped, the the round score line just sort of makes it seem worse. It's just so many things, but I don't know if they can really like come back on this map. To be honest, I mean, I think like the map itself, they can. Like I, I'm. I'm confident they'll be good at it, but after, you know, coming off the back of that kind of result and that kind of performance, you know, they didn't just lose it, but they categorically lost it in every possible way they could have done. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's really, really poor. I mean, it's, it's just, <laughs> I mean, I was, like, shitting on both of the scouts. Or, <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's both of them <laughs> that absolutely... <laughs> destroy them so um as i was saying that they never really stood out for me they've stood out for me today 
Uh, yeah, Honey sure. as well did really, really well. Obviously, getting a little bit too confident sometimes with uh, holding on to Ubers, but he was um, milking he that more right than the time German milk lady. Yeah. yeah. Like, when you're already comfortably ahead and you've got the other team with a back foot, going for these, like, sort of, I guess, arrogant plays, you know, like holding on to it the whole time. Mm. Um, I guess it's just sort of, it's for safe time to do it, you know, because if it doesn't come off, um, the other team's in such a bad position anyway, it almost yeah. doesn't matter. And if it, it does come off, like, it just really sort of hammers home the frustration it, it for the other really team. It really gets you, your team down, yeah. I remember playing against Mirulin and that happening when he just sort of stares you down and looks at you and spins around in circles whilst he milks his Uber like a cow, but... We're live. Oh, so, this is... Um, Force Kings are the first team in Premiership this season to officially be out of the playoff race. Um, all Force Kings can do right now is potentially scupper DD and 5 Abs chances as we go to this first middle on Badlands. Force Kings on blue. Jackie Legs open up with a big bomb, gets behind Chappie. Uh, reverse bomb coming in from QNX, but Sorix has just rushed through and killed Honey. Uh, it's now just a DM fest on slope as Frags are traded to and forth. Only Wacky remains uh, stuck underneath and surrounded by DD and 5 Abs players. Will get cleaned up. And what a chaotic middle that was. But the flank was, that comes was on like, top. really good for DD, 5 and 5. DD and 5 Abs. What does the Abs mean? I was complaining their name was rubbish one time. And I said, you need yes. to change your name. So they changed it from DD and 5 Friends to DD and 5 Abs. Oh goodness, DDM5 abs. Alright, I'll just call them 5 abs because it's differentiating <laughs> from uh, DD5F. So, 5 abs, yeah, that um, mid fight was actually pretty good at them. When um, Honey went down, they all just collapsed onto uh, the slope and just crushed them on mid, so it was well played. We have one of those, you know, time testing. Oh dear, he's dead. Yeah. Never mind, this should be a push from. Um, four skins, but I'm not quite sure if they are feeling confident. Jackie has made his way to shit house. He's going on to Honey Badger. He's been launched into the air, but unfortunately, he was hanging there for what seems like days. He gets taken out of the sky. Yeah, they've sort of traded two for two right now, but they have to be careful because uh, Honey Badger's Uber is slightly ahead. And they do back it off. And we just want to see if they want to take in this fight right now. They should uh, just go in now. There's like no reason why they just get somebody on the Spire, open up um, the, the entire area, and then there you go. Ixie getting taken oh, down wow. on the flank by Shulky. And, and this is really, really awkward for um, five abs now. Like, Honey's 30 HP. Uh, Honey does well to actually to sort of see the situation's gone to shit, essentially, and just walk mm. away with his Uber to save it for middle. Uh, but they've not really had time to set up. Chappie just about defends himself with a pipe as he gets rushed. Um, but there's a lot of pressure on right now. Honey Badger is going to get forced. QNX all over Zangetsu. QNX is just trying to pump out the damage right now. Uh, manages to clean up a scout who's separated. Um, QNX is staying in though, gets airshot by Wacky. All over Wacky Ooh. though, gonna take him out. He's now chasing down Zangetsu. Jackie will come and save his med, uh, but he's completely outnumbered right now. Chappie's piping people down, uh, but the frags have actually gone really evenly in that fight. Um, but it doesn't look like they want to contest here, Force Kings. It looks like they're just rashly wrapping around up top, so uh, Shulkeeper can get on Spire to deny him. And it looks like Shulkeeper's gonna take this 1v1 with Vixie on point. Uh, they're trading damage, but she'll keep all somehow wins it on super low HP. Uh, clutch meat shot saves it. And now Diddy and Five Abs are just going to have to back out of this one. Yeah, Spyro's running the Quickie Bomb Launcher, which is not a bad choice for this map because the the length of the map really does help. But I kind of feel like with it, you have to be a lot more aggressive. Like just spamming out stickies from distances all the time doesn't really benefit anybody. But making space with the less damage that you take yourself is pretty much like a, a really good attribute of said weapon um, as well as using it to clear stickies but he doesn't seem to be doing that but he hits Honey Badger with a sick pipe they are forced to uber in a very very bad place and four skins still have theirs so this mid should be well and truly theirs unless they mess it up somehow Spari gets slammed but he's still alive and yeah. he dodges an arrow from his own mid <laughs> Just can't stop dodging. Mm. <laughs> uh, but it looks like, yeah, QNX and Honey wanted to take it in really aggressively, but that pipe just knocking Honey back uh, caused QNX to be dropped right there. Opens it up, and now they've got this big old Uber advantage. Four Kings finally in the offensive for one of the first times in this game, but Ixie and DD and 5F are pushing through house, and they're going to start the back cap. QNX has jumped up to try and deny Spire. The Uber's popped up. QNX oh, there's a really good it. back cap 
Uh, nice airshot from Wacky, but I'm not sure if it will come off. Jackie Legs is trying to deny both of them. He gets one. Uh, Jackie Legs is still fighting it. Uh, DD5F as well. That um, was really, really great work. Yeah, that. Oh was... wow. It doesn't matter. That's not important <laughs> because they were both weak anyway. But what was important was that Jackie managed to block it. Because yeah, long time. That, I mean, two against one as well. Just being able to take out one scout. That's a very, very game-saving move. That is because if they'd lost that backup, they would have definitely been able to get Spire as well. And mm, they really need to try and get a force on Honey Badger. Both soldiers jump on Spire, but Shappy is able to get onto Zangestu. Is he going to die? He didn't. Oh. He survives. He's definitely been uh, uh, praying to the heavens and his <laughs> Lord Almighty there. Oh god, that had that had that sentence had disaster written all over it. Yeah. <laughs> that had like yeah, lawsuit. Was, oh, <laughs> all the just, lawyers in chat were perking up. Yeah, I was like, God damn it! Be careful what you say, Chris. <laughs> Put the briefcase away. Yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I guess he survives, and uh, means he's going to have this big on either advantage. So they get this second opportunity to push through, and Wacky just bursts through and destroys the combo. There. The flank of DD and Five Abs is still hanging around on Spire though. Look if they're trying to set something up. Spari's going to jump aggressively, uh, crushes DD Five F on Spire, and they've played this really well. Opened it up perfectly. Chappie's going to get caught out in top lobby as well. Um, this could be around Shulky's on last. Uh, yeah, they're slowly but surely capping it. DQ QX is going to clean up one, but Spari's arrived on last time with a quickie bomb launcher. Uh, he's surely going to clean everything up. DD5F is coming in. He's got free. He's somehow got free. Ixie's on to Spari. DD5F oh, yeah. is going to get a 4k. How did he get away with that? Jackie Legs is now hiding bottom right, but how did he make that happen? Um, basically, Foreskins went in, being all like, Hi there, we're Foreskins. Lose the round. Uh, and that was it. You know, they're just going to beef it. They, they, they had everybody on that point, and I don't know why. There, there was no need. It really will not make the point a difference. Wasn't, two wasn't capped. It was. They were capping last. And then DD5 came down. I'm sorry, I just got a message on... Anyway, yeah, game. Almost, did you get yeah, a message two. saying that you were an idiot? I got a message from Jill. Yeah. Uh, don't know what, what it's about. Saying? Um, are you Commander X, right? No. Oh. I am. Um, but that's that's a conversation for another time. I'm glad you've cleared that up. <laughs> Sorry, I just got really confused. You can unfriend him now. Uh, it's not often I get asked, am I Commander X? Boy, that I don't was, know. Um... Sorry. Let's talk about TF2. Um, uh, it looks like uh, they've moved kind of far forward here um, into the balcony area, which will keep us going to pick off Schoberg. Uh, Jackie Legs is still hiding on that lamp, though. He could... There's like been about five opportunities that he could have actually back up that. That's really annoying, and he goes out a long time. Obviously, he didn't actually know where the position was, but I'm sure you would have had sound and you could hear maybe the rough location of these players. But oh my goodness gracious me, that hurts. Uh, I had a little flyby onto the last and saw that there was no one on that, and I was like, why isn't he going? And he decides <laughs> to go when his, the, the team falls back and his team start pushing. But there is a Really, really good Uber Force for four skins onto Honey Badger. They've now Ubered in reply to their Uber, as you do. It's the uh, the social etiquette of TFT. <laughs> and they're doing a good job contesting the spire. There's only three players left, but they really, 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 really need to do this. If they do not cut this, I'm probably going to have an aneurysm. And yeah, Jackie's going to spawn in two. Uh, he's but going in. behind him. He jumps at just the right time. He's going to take up a medic. Going to get the sick it. kill. And four skins have done it. Uh, one up right now. Uh, that was a quite a long round, just over eight minutes. And Dillion Five Abs looks had some good moments in that round, but they they still do need a point to guarantee themselves the playoffs. Otherwise, they're relying on favors and favorable results in the other games. I think we're, I was talking about how um, Four Skins are going to be probably deflated after losing, but the problem is is that Diddy Five F and Five Abs. What a terrible name that is. Um, are probably going to be too relaxed, if anything. So they really need to get into this game and they're going to be on a bit of an edgy moment right now. DD5F is going through Valley and he takes out Shulky straight away. He's trying to chase down Zangestu with the Market Gardener, but he misses. Oh my god! But Zangestu gets a sore on him as well. He's 18 HP. He can actually kill him. Oh, well, he doesn't. That he, last gets out, he gets a sore. Yeah. So they haven't even lost that much of an advantage with him having his travelling all the way back. 
Yep, uh, uses the hat switch to back spawn. Gonna meet up with Sorex. Wow, Valve, wow. how can this mechanic still be in the game? It doesn't even, it's not even realistic. If I swap my hat, I still stay in the same position. Oh, it's been, my emotions been ruined. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm <laughs> passionate about my realistic games. Yeah. That's why uh, I play Call of Duty all the time. Because they lost uh, everyone on middle, though, poor skins, they are going to be forced back to last. So they're just going to have to hold out on there as we see. Uh, DD and 5 apps already making themselves into top lobby. Badlands last, uh, traditionally quite difficult to hold just because of how quickly that cat point does go. As we see, it looks like we're going to rotate both soldiers to bottom right right now uh, to try and break the hole. Jackie Legs is close. He's going to get to the right and he just sort of gets away up top, uh, plays the Oh my god, right, these arrow dodging. can't get anyone. He, he, you know, I think he dodged at least of, um, at least three Zangestu arrows. He was like, nope, I don't want your dirty needles. They're still uh, pressuring a, it. a joke there that I'm not going to mention. Yeah, they're playing... DD5F was just playing that bottom right for ages, trying to find that pick. Uh, no success, though, so they're going to have to try something different. Uh, as it looks like they're just going to go with uh, the scouts through top. Everyone's just getting buffed up, so I imagine we might see more of a traditional trade. But again, DD5F... I don't agree with Spari still having the Quickie Bomb launcher and last, especially as um, Shappy isn't running it either. You really do want those stickies on the point and to stay there, but he's opting for the, um, you know, non-existent last defense strat here. Mm, and not only that, risky. I would like four skins. I mean, they've got Derman with the quickie bomb launcher there. I would like them to have a heavy or pyro to at least beef up their last a bit because they don't really have a class that can buy time. Um, you know, to you know, to waste time or to block the last point effectively. Yeah, they're kind of relying on the Uber to do all of that at the same time yeah. as maintaining themselves the high ground. Um, luckily, they're sort of aggressive players. Actually, you know, got them a couple of frags and allowed them to push out to a forward hold. Um, but because again, Sparrow's on that quickie bomb launcher, so he's Sparrow's watching top right, which means that the shutter doors aren't sticky at all. So they can just run through. Sorex is holding main, but if if a couple of buff people come down main, there's not really a lot Sorex can do other than call it. I guess Jackie is on the on the rim. That's where yeah. he likes to be most of the time. But yeah. he's gone off it now. But like DD five up, and he, he should just jump on the point. Um, maybe his five abs should as well. They're now Ubered in through main. They've gotten a bit of a late force on Zangestu as well. They've actually been able to back out without killing, without losing anyone. Borskins have lost two. Q and X dies as well. Shappy is plowing through main like a record ball. That is my favourite song from Miley Cyrus, and he helps his team capture the point. Yeah, like as soon as Q and X went on the point there, two of the four things players had to commit to block him because there's no stickies on it. Mm. At which point, Shappy gets uh, oh, I think yeah. a kill on one and then a load of damage onto the other. Not only that, but Spario was the last person alive. Mm. I wonder if that would have gone differently if he had a better sticky weapon, like maybe the Scottish <laughs> Resistance. Anything that doesn't automatically date your bombs after a short amount of time. Yeah. As we go into the next middle, we see Spari trying to get uh, aggressive with that quickie bomb launcher again, just spamming onto that train, forcing them back. But we have a soldier coming up from Slope and a soldier from Valleys. And Getsu's left all alone with QNX. QNX is going to clean that one up. And DD and Five Friends are just destroying them right now. Wacky gets the medic pick in reverse, but I think that's all they're going to get out of this middle. Uh, as Jackie's actually stuck behind, just waiting for the health pack. But he's got five players fully loaded, and I think Jackie might just want to try and get to the spawn honest, kill on honey. He, need, he needs to. If if they fall for this, then that's no just one's shocking. come back. No one's come back from five abs. I think Ixie's coming now. Oh uh, dear. Yeah, honey's going to delay his peak, uh, and Jackie legs should go down. <sighs> yeah, that's like to be honest. I mean, I'm quite surprised that only one person went back anyway, because that could have gone really, really bad. But is he on vaccinator? Uh, yes, he is. Yeah, he, he runs it a few times. He was doing it in pickup. I would have not have foreseen that he would use a dirty pickup strat for the main game. I, He's probably the only medic that really runs this, to be honest. But... Yeah, like it's good on last, but I'm, I have some real questions on this. Um, as they try and push through house, but they actually lose uh, Shobo coming out the back. They're going to use Popper for vaccinators to get through, though. They've done a load of damage to Spari, but they can't find a frag. QNX is going to keep going deep. Uh, focusing Wacky down as well. They've got to get any frags, but some nice damage from the DD and 5 abs players. And they keep pinning them back into trash. And Zangetsu's still quite a way away from Uber. Market Gardener comes out, it's missed. Zangetsu's in the air. DD 5F, not going to get the frag, but Ixie's got behind. Uh, again, a vulnerable flank from Forskings costs him dearly and costs Zangetsu his life. Yeah, um, 
This uh, vaccinator selection is a uh, bamboozling me to say the least. No one has any health because they have no buffs. <laughs> like they, they constantly yeah. on low health. Uh, Q&A gonna clean up Wacky and Chappie's gonna get a frag as well. It's somehow working out. It's the uh, vaccinator, obviously. Yeah. We're, that, well, this is why they're in Prim at the end of the day and we're not. You know what it is? Vaccinator's not the best medigun, but it's better than no medic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, that is true, that is true. So if Sangetsu's always dead, it doesn't seem to make any difference. You see, everyone's charging for a point now, but Sangetsu is gonna get caught out again. Uh, and Forcing's just oversaved their welcome on uh, Spire Defense and it ends up not just costing him that, but probably going to cost him the last as his vaccinator comes through. In explosive damage on, going to mean the stickies do nothing. Soldier on the point, Kunix is oh, going to wow. count out. DD and Fighter Babs back in control, back in the lead. 15 minutes left on the clock. They really, really need to, um, I don't know, find some sort of game plan for skins because they do seem to be um, quite messy at the moment. N nothing is really stringing together again. It's similar to how um, Viaduct was. I mean, the fact that they lost a round to a medic that had the vaccinator <laughs> is quite telling, if anything. Yeah, they had such a good health advantage as well. They didn't pay. It didn't really pay off. As we see, Jackie go over onto Honey Badger straight away, picks him off. Uh, but Ixie's got aggressive, taken down Spari, taken down the medic. Uh, Going to combine with his Roma to kill your people as well. Uh, they. Honey Badger did go down to that early Jackie bomb, but other than that, Forcing's really got nothing out of this mid. Mm, yeah, it's um, like Ixie literally just, I don't know, it, there's no one staying with Sangestu. Like, it's really, really strange. I mean, it was just Spari and him moving over the point, and that's just not enough. You don't have anything to sort of defend your demo man yeah, and your medic. And he just went across, just meet shot them both, and then that was it. It's like they're committing too much forward and not getting anything from it at the same time. Oh, so, because if Jackie Leg kills Honey straight away, so everyone knows what the reaction to that yeah. is, you know? The other team's going to go aggressive, but they just leave Zangetsu out to dry. And now they're trying to force their way through Choke. Jackie Legs has got behind, but they've lost a couple of people forcing it through him. Jackie Legs is uh, stuck fighting Chappie. We'll pick him off. Uh, but now they're desperately outnumbered. They get, both the scouts are going to combine and just clean up the remaining players. Jackie Legs uh, is dragging his team back into this game, though. Uh, taking down Honey Badger. He wants to go for the block as well. Ambitious. Uh, gonna hit <laughs> some damage onto them. He still goes Ooh. for it. He cleans up Shoba. He hits a direct onto DD5F as well. Uh, Jackie Legs really doing his absolute best. It, at least it shows that one of the players wants to play this video game. <laughs> Jackie Legs doesn't need any more practice. He's ready. Mm. I, I mean, I would like to see Forskins just really just push out before um, DD5 and 5 abs <laughs> contest um, as they are getting times five so it is really really good so far they've I done it as well think I like they've this. got it i mean honey's running is that the vaccinator no he's got the kid quits krieg so this is going to be quite interesting dd5 almost gets a rocket on sang but i would not have killed him anyway this is actually a really really good fight from them in total honey's got to have 90 crits but they have no demo man to really uh utilize said hmm. crits but He's spawning in two seconds, he will get forward, so what I'd like to see is maybe... Oh, this could be a, a nice surprise. I don't know if four skins really know. That's the real question. Did any In that sort of scrappy fight, did anyone see what Medigun he was well, on? They're completely rotating against each other. Four skins are now all in the house. Two scouts are on patio now. They're going aggressive. It is actually forcing them to use the crits early. Shappy gets one frag with it. Forces the uber, and they actually make manage to get two, and look at the health! From four skins. Look where they are as well. They're in this lobby. Is, the this is really bad. They, they need to do something. They just need to get out. They need to go to mid, I guess. Like They need to wait for some respawns and try and sandwich them. But Jackie Leg's dying at the end. Uh, big 22 second respawn on him. Sure, Keeple's uh, running forward as everyone tries to get back. He actually gets onto Honey. Honey's separated. Sure, Keeple gets the frag in the midst of DD and 5 abs players as everyone else just desperately tries to run back. Uh, to get to the last man through that resupply door. And they're going to get back in time to backspawn, and they got the medic pick. But it looks like DD and 5 Ab just want to uh, just man mode it through. Jackie Legs is above the point. He comes down to block it. QNX is walking on it, but oh he juggles it around the corner. And again, no stickies on it. Oh, it's like. Uh, do they even know that there are other classes in this game? Like, just get a heavy or something. Just put some meat on the points and then you're not going to get pounded by theirs. 
Like, that's all you needed to do. Like, it's so well, frustrating because it just buys so much time and that's all that they needed. Especially, like, if you've not got stickers on the point and they're throwing bodies at the point, you just have to match their bodies, essentially. Mm. Like, there's no other option because of how quickly it can. Uh, as we see, she'll keep actually go down straight away. Um, they've got all over Force Kings here. Uh, Ixi and DD5F, uh, or QNX even, behind them. Just going to get so many frags. Ixi's still behind, trying to pistol everyone down. Sparry's trapped in a horrible fight as he cleans them up. Uh, Wacky's still in house, but Ixi's lurking behind. Going to trap him in with pistol as well. He's got the equalizer out. Wacky somehow gets the frag! Wow. Uh, superb rockets from a fight. I think even Wacky had presumed he had lost mm. at that point. Um, Consolation frag though, as Honey survives that entire mid, and the flank on from DD and Five Abs on the middle is just doing so much work. Forcing's just they just don't have anything to match it with. They, they need to sort of just have some sort of setup a mid. It's like no one on their team knows where anybody else is sort of like what the positions are. So whenever they go aggressive or like uh, DD Five F and Five Abs try and go onto them, like there's just. They're all just so completely messed up because they have nothing to sort of work off. They don't have like any foundation of movement. Spari charges in. He's behind him. Goes in on Honey. Oh, Honey. What pops. a force. Literally scares him into Ubering then. Zangestu's on 1 HP and he was 90% and he gets taken out. Oh my goodness gracious me. That is such a mess. <laughs> For a what? second. There was a split second where I thought. This was going to work out. Do you know what I mean? Like, Spari was going to somehow drop him from behind with the shield and it was going to be, you know, a hero play. But instead, they just drop another round. Nine minutes left, three rounds down. Bad Bad's rounds do go quickly. Uh, four things just playing for pride more than anything right now as they roll out through Valley. Both soldiers look like they want to go aggressive. Jackie's going up first. Big jump all over him into the Valley. Wacky goes deep as well. Uh, just trying to pound that down. But Ixie and Honey Badger have just ploughed through underneath. Got two frags, including Zangetsu. Jackalegs is going to get picked off. Uh, low health on a lot of the players right now, uh, but no one from Force Kings is really in a good position. Sorek somehow gets two on the slope before being shut down by DDM5, DD5F. But, um, but still, like these individual plays, like we've seen a couple from Jackie, that one just there from Sorex. Oh, man. I like, really, shall keep all, really but... want a tactics.tf demonstration now of. The shocking positioning from Forskins that was really really bad that mid. Like there, there was just there was just holes all over the place. Like they literally just gave DD5 and five abs. I fucking know their name. DD5 actually bombing in now. Gonna just kill us and get you for free. No one. That was like, the most get... effortless bomb in the world. It was so casual. Like it was like yeah. a like a Sunday bomb. <laughs> It was there was there was literally no effort. That was like a pencil jump, and he just did like a, a a sort of like just launched two rockets. Made no effort to even look at him. <laughs> and it's just like, it's, oh, I'm just gonna kill him. I know. It's like he was texting with his other hand, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> like he, oh, let me just bomb a medic and send this text to my mum that I'm about to get a med pick. But somehow, you know the most frustrating part of that? Considering how bad that went, they make a really good trade happen and kill like everyone on DD5F. Like their DM is good. Mm. They just can't. They just can't combine it into like they a can't cohesive coordinate. effort. Uh, I, I guess maybe this is from like the part of having Jackie Roma calling. You're not mm. really sort of a part of the combo so much, but DD5 and DD and five abs. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I don't know, Jesus Christ. So fucking... It's a shame you hate their name because at this stage of the game with 6 minutes and 50 seconds left, 5 1 up, considering they need 1 point from this final map to guarantee playoffs, mm. I think we're, look we're looking at one of our playoff contenders here in terms of DD and 5 abs. As so we go into this next middle, Spari matching up with Chappie, gonna try and focus down uh, all these players on the floor right now, Spari, but he's taking a bunch of damage. And they're pushing up underneath. Ixie's going to rush your people. Uh, and they're trying to rush up as well, but Honey Badger gets separated from him. The double soldier bomb comes forward. Chappie's plowing forward. They get a load of damage off. DD5F with a market guarder to finish off Zangetsu. Um, they might be able to oh this up here, Force Oh, almost got another one. That would have been so good. It's now Schoberg versus two. Uh, he's on half. Up. He's trying to pin him down, uh, but Jackie and Sorek's going to combine to clean that one up. Uh, messy middle, uh, sort of, you know, you can sort of saw the idea, but Ixie and Honey just went way too soon. Uh, so just got strung out and picked off, and Forskings 
take a middle. That was um, pretty good. I've never seen DD5 FK at Mark and Gardner, I don't think. That's like he's almost only like eighth one this season. He's going mm -hmm. to the playoffs. He could hit double figure market gardens. That would be. I think he's got six and he's got what? One in this game? Seven? Yeah. Mm. That'd be uh, really, really good. Um, but Jackie tries to go in for some reason, even though neither team has advantage or disadvantage. I was hiding there from mid, apparently. Some nerd tells me. <laughs> but. I mean, I don't. I, this is pretty much over. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're far is, on the tie turner right now. Yeah, um, this is quite impossible. He's not going to be able to turn the tide. Wait, uh, uh? maybe that's why he's actually using it. He's, he's just <laughs> explaining, lecturing to his team about what the secondary I've, meaning of his weapon is. I've got the tide turner. Don't worry, the tide will be turned. As a uh, bomb comes in from Jackie and Honey Badger's holding on to it, dodging these rollers. QNX has got the force up. Uh, he won't be able to be saved. And actually, uh, Honey drops two right there, but the flank is behind, and Force King Zebra is going to fade, and they're going to be surrounded. Shobo trying to focus them down. Ixie and Shobo combining for so much damage. Going to clean up everybody, and that's a wipe for Force Kings. Yeah, I and... just can't believe that they sent people to Force, and they lost three in the process of doing that. It just sort of sums up Force Kings' game, to be honest. I mean, I was expecting this game to be so close, and really, really good, and... Only one team showed up. Uh, the others, I don't know what they're doing. But yeah, they look like they want to push it here at home in here as well. Like Spari's now uh, nice pipe to the nice Showberg, but Ixie's going to try and get behind bottom right. Takes on she'll keep uh, desperately reloading, and Ixie's going to win that. Get two frags right there for Ixie, opening it up as we see uh, Chappy trying to work it in top, backed up by Q and X, going to get that frag. Only three players remain. Neither team has Uber. Zangetsu's gonna go down to QNX. Uh, Zangetsu's just been at QNX's mercy this entire game. Sparry charges onto the point. DD and 5 Abs close it out and secure yeah. themselves into playoffs comfortably. GG, easy Toyotas. Wow, yeah, easy. Yeah. That was uh, underwhelming, I would say, for this game, but having said that, credit to. Um, DD and 5 abs, they did really, really well. They played it. Mm. Uh, I, they have exceeded my expectations uh, and many, many, many more. Yeah. Do you want to take a quick look at logs before we bring the players in? You know what, mate? I'm already on logs. Oh, yeah? It's Come my home page. What, sta what stands out for you? Um, numbers. Some of them being quite high above the one that I can count. Um DD5F top fragging with 28 frags as a Roma, that is just a telling sign as to how poorly coordinated Foreskins were, to be honest. I mean, he was just never dealt with. Yeah, it, he just literally had all the room in the world. It's it's just ridiculous. He, he had so much space, he was literally spanning across all the map pool. Um, so yeah, he, he played really, really well. QNX as well, doing quite well, 24 frags. Um, getting some fat DPM up there as well. So, yeah. The, the logs sort of reflect how this game kind of went. I mean, DD5, sorry, DD and 5 abs stomped. Um, four skins couldn't really do anything against it. So I guess they had 15 deaths. In 25 minutes. So again, mm. if you expand it out, we're probably looking at just shy of 20. Yeah, that's really, really shocking. Um, DD5F also absolutely wrecking the scouts. He had 11 frags on scouts. That is just ridiculous. Just dominating the flank. Like, in... like soldiers shouldn't have that many frags on scouts, especially a roaming one, because you you pretty much lose a one v one. It's hard. Yeah, like ro roaming against scouts in prem is hard. Like he shouldn't be allowed. Like the amount of freedom DD5F was allowed. Yeah, it's just he had big. like every single opportunity to sort of go in and jump on them like there was no sort of resistance most of the time when you play against a better team you'll see it often where like it's really difficult for a roman because you jump in um like onto the scout and the medic and you just met with a scout and you just get suspended in midair whilst you just sit there and watch this little scout nerd pummel you with bullets until you die but he experienced none of that there was literally nothing stopping him and yeah should we talk to some players then? Let's get the inside scoop. 
on what went wrong. What went wrong? My no, Everything. Not. Hi guys, Honey and Jackie join us now. Hey. Hey, let's talk to Jackie first. Jackie. Yeah. That was your last game in your first season of Prem. Um, yeah. I imagine that's not how you wanted it to go. Um, you guys just never seem to, like, from the start of Viaduct, you guys just never seem to be on the same page. And Zangetsu seemed to be strung out a lot. What, what happened, like, from your side of things? Um, mostly, uh, like, us fucking around and just, like, laughing and team speak as much as we can and just, like, I don't know, trolling around or something, but mostly bad comms, I guess, and lack of practice. That that what caused us the uh, dis disconnect between the players. You know, we we didn't have much. You know, we just wanted to end it, get the season over with, and uh, you know, yeah. Okay, so that's you were just kind of cruising out. You didn't have any. You weren't trying to get the six points and clutch at that final you playoff spot. You were trying, spot. basically. You are just wasting my time. <laughs> Sorry, War. That's right, I didn't take the time out of my evening to cast some video games to promote the good game that is TF2. And you nerds just ruin it by not even trying. Before um, we... Oh, here's some... Gary on more. Uh, okay. It was just more... Are you just Bad complaining words. more? Okay. Yeah. Let's not let's not listen to that. Um before we talk about the other team then, Jackie, where does this sort of leave you guys, you know sort of future, future of your team? Um uh, I have no idea. I mean this is uh my last game in ETF twelve probably forever. And uh I know a bunch of like maybe Wacky and Storks are gonna play. I think uh Shokopo is also quitting. Uh not sure. Not sure what's going to be happening with us in the future. If maybe if I get a good job, maybe I'll have time. Uh, but I doubt it. So we'll see. I don't know. The next season is like a big, if. big. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, it is what it is. Is this the end of Israeli TF2 at a high level then? Maybe. Who knows? You know, that's what they said. Like what? Three years ago or two years ago, right? Yeah, there was a three year hiatus, though. <laughs> yeah, you know, so here we are again. You know, what can I say? Oh, well, it was good while it lasted. Honey. Hey. Your season's not over yet. So you guys needed four points tonight to guarantee playoffs. You smashed it, took all six points, which means um, you're the third team to be confirmed in a playoff spot alongside Nerd Rage and Perilous Gaming. Uh, talk to me a little bit about tonight first. It's, it looked pretty comfortable at all stages. Uh, yeah, I think that kind of sums up the whole game. Now, they were just, I guess, enjoying themselves for their last game. Um, now, nah, we played really well on Viaduct. Um, Iceman was able to play crazy on Sniper. He didn't die in the first round, I don't think. And Shobo played really well as well. Uh, Badlands, on the other hand, is one of our worst maps. So uh, that was kind of a bogey map, that's why we lost the first round. And then we like calmed it down a little bit and got back into the game. Is Viaduct like a big map for you? Because obviously, with all the maps this season, we only get to see the teams twice on it, you know? So it's kind of hard to really judge, you know, who's good at what map, you know? Only seeing such like a, a small portion of it. But obviously you've got this result today, which looked comfortable, when you're obviously the massive result against LEGO. Like, is it a strong map for you? Is it one you want to play in playoffs, or...? It definitely feels like a strong map for us. Like, uh, I don't see any problems that we have on it at the moment. Like, the, the only issue we do have is just some positioning issues with the right-hand side, but I... Th He's oh, died. Oh, that's a piece, honey. You just go on. Oh, did I go? Oh, you're back. You just sort of cut out. Yeah, right. You're talking about uh, some positioning issues on the right-hand side? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. So we sorted that out this week, and uh, nah, it feels like a really strong map for us. Okay. I Wait. would uh, like to chime in, if I may. It's Go not going to be board. a complaint. Um, but Are you sure? First of all, congratulations, honey, for making it into the playoffs. Second of all, congratulations, your team and you are not bad. I will... Hold my hand and say, I apologize for calling you shit.
I'll let that sink in for a while since that's sort of the nicest <laughs> thing. That's the nicest thing War said in about four seasons. That really got to me, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's no surprise. I was impressed. Uh, there's, there's nothing more I can really say. It was really, really good. Um, yeah. My my expectations have been uh, quashed by you guys because that was a really, really good game of Team Fortress 2. <laughs> yeah, no. I've, I mentioned it a bit at the start of the cast. Um, like, at the start of the season, kind of, fairly or unfairly, the butt of, like, every joke going into a fixture, you know? Like, everyone kind of pinned you as you know, finishing bottom regardless of whatever else happened you know, everyone's predictions ended with you last essentially. Yeah. And you're the third team in playoffs right now and it's up to the other three, Lego, Planet Express and Infuse to sort of fight out and Public Lear. So those two games coming up are going to decide between you mean, uh, I'm and pretty sure. Yeah, about yeah. This. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Infused and Planet Express have no chance of getting in playoff, no matter what the outcome of Public Clear versus Lego will be. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. it's they're not going to have a chance, no matter how the outcome will be. Either it's three what three it? or whatever it is, they're not going to have enough points. Because Lego will have eighteen. Yeah. Yep. And Planet Express and Infused can get seventeen. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. What so. if? No, no matter no, how yeah, you look no. at it. Oh wow. Uh, there's no matter so, how you yeah. look at it. So yeah, not, only, not only did you secure your playoff spot then, you also dashed another two teams' hopes <laughs> of playoff <laughs> spots. So yeah. Wait, so who isn't in it? Is it Infused and Planet Express, yeah. Yeah. So it's basically uh, get destroyed nerds. <laughs> Public Clear versus Lego is literally a straight playoff, essentially, you know. There's only one point. Lego ahead no. Public Clear are ahead by one point right now? If I got the yeah, right way are. around? Yeah, they are, yeah. Um, um, so it's basically a straight playoff, you know, one point advantage to public clear. Winner gets into playoffs, loser doesn't. Uh, Planet Express and Team Infuse play each other. That's for no reason anymore. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Rest in peace. Uh, yeah, so how are you feeling going into playoffs? Like, do you have anything Insane. planned? Like, uh, do you have probably any- going to be scrimming a lot this week. And yeah. practicing a lot of maps because we have some weak maps that I think that we need to improve on. But nah, I'm really pleased that we even got to this stage, to be honest with you. So hopefully we can at least win one game of playoffs. Hopefully. So obviously you're going to play um, basically whoever wins out of LEGO and Public Clear. Yeah. Uh, who would you rather play? Who would you, who would you feel more confident going up against? Well, I think LEGO would kind of want revenge for what happened in the season. Because it was so close, the two games that we had against them. Um, so I think I would rather play against Public Clear because I think that like we've been over the demos and stuff where we played against them, um, and we got destroyed in both maps. So it would be good to beat them, I think. So I'd like to face them again. Okay, nice. And where are you? So where do you self see doing like overall in the playoffs? Then, like not just first game, like. Obviously, the first cool. game's going to be a bit even, but then obviously you hit sort of the big time, as it were. Yeah. Well, I think full two is going to be quite difficult for us, obviously. And if we even beat them, like, Nerd Rage is going to be insane. So, no, I don't know. We're probably going to be doing a lot over this week and just practicing up and just making sure that we're ready for playoffs. I think where I want to be aiming for is beating Public Clear and giving. Uh, it's not full tilt anymore, is it? It's perilous gaming. Yeah. That's Wait, yeah, how do you yeah. know Public Air is going to go? Not Lego, dude. Oh, Public Air or Lego, yeah. Right. Uh, beat them um, and then give uh, Perilous Gaming a good game. I'm feeling Lego in that picture, to be honest. Now Kaya's not mm-hmm. calling. I think they're. Yeah, I as, think soon as, as soon as Kaya it. stopped calling, that was sort of all their dreams down the drain. Rams will just carry on going spy and just never get the hint that he can't play it. Let's not get too off track. Um, but yeah, that was pretty entertaining for what it was tonight. Uh, a good show of yourself. Hopefully everyone had fun. Um, as that may be the last time we see many of these Jewish players at this level, if at all, in TF2. So, Ward, do you have anything to say? Anything to ask before we go? Before we wrap mm, it up? No. Okay. Uh, let's do uh, DD and 5 abs first. Then. So... DD5F is here himself as well. Do you have anything to say? 
Uh, not really. I'm just chilling in here. Shoutouts? Anything? Anything to contribute? Anyone to <laughs> Anything, thank? Anything, you know, just it to, to, to the uh, pad the, the time on, you know, the <laughs> YouTube VODs so then we get more ad revenue. Uh, yeah. uh, um, I'll, I'll do shout. Uh, did you go first? Yeah. Just play b ball kids. It makes you good. <laughs> Honey? Um, shout out to you guys, obviously, for casting this tonight. Uh, and especially David on the camera. Uh, shout out to Assiduous, um, Planet Express, and Infuse Rip. And yeah, that's about it. I like yeah. how you, you can hear how hard you're trying not to be like too happy <laughs> when you're saying Rip to like Infused and Planet Express. No. Like really having to like hold back the joy in your voice. That's Come on, then, Jackie. Talk me, talk me through it, then. This could be like your last shout out. Yeah, uh, shout out to you, you and War uh, and David for casting. Shout out to uh, our opponents for playing uh, out of their minds tonight. Shout out to my team. It was a fun ride. Three years will not be forgotten. Uh, uh, shout out to anybody who still plays TF2. And shout out to uh, V2, Lupus, and uh, uh that's it, yeah, that's it. QNX for having uh, internet problems, like every other <laughs> player we played in this perm. But, yeah. That's Don't worry, it. Jackie. There'll be, there'll be no more internet problems now you're going to real life. <laughs> Why you gotta do me like that? <laughs> <laughs> War, any shout-outs before we go? Uh, you got a monologue prepared? Shout-out to me, and uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh... And my YouTube channel, because I have a podcast and that's it. All right. Uh, thanks for everyone who watched tonight. Thanks for the players who joined us. Big shout out to Forskings and all the other players who, you know, this was their final game. Um, and stay tuned, obviously. Uh, we'll bring you the Infused vs. Planet Express sort of, I don't even know what it is, like a loser's dinner or something, like a loser's matchup. Um, and then, obviously, that crucial game between the public Lear and Lego, and obviously I think it's Sunday for Nerd Rage Against Perilous. Oh, it has moved apparently, but whatever. We'll bring it to you. Um, it'll be obviously like the preview of the playoffs. Um, so stay tuned to TFTV. Thanks again for everyone who watched. Big shout out to Jackie and the Jews.